It's good. I'm coming to y'all with a quick NBA throwback for Steve Nash legacy and career. We're about to have a little fun today. So Steve Nash is a two-time in. You better run down the highlights of his career before we talk about him. He had two-time MVP, eight-time All-Star, three All NBA first teams, which is very, very important because he's played in the league with Vince Carter's, Ray Allen's, Kobe Bryant's. Allen Iversons, Derrick Roses, and players like that for him to be all in the all NBA first team is very very important for 0507, Chris Paul and stuff like that. Then he you gotta think about it, he also had a two time MVP in the seasons where he had to go against Shaq, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, Kobe, T Mac, Vince Carter, Allen Iverson. You know these are Hall of Famers future first ballot Hall of Famers and he got MVPs over all these guys and he had a number one seed in the Western Conference a couple years against all these teams and all these other great players he got two MVPs and three all NBA first teams two all NBA second teams in 08 and 2010 showing consistency and longevity in his career to get an All-NBA second team that late in his career in 2010 is pretty good. Because that's really, really late. And then he had an All-NBA third team in 2002 and in 2003. He's a two-time NBA skills champion, five-time assist leader, 05 through 07 and 2010-2011. So he had he had he was consistently leading the NBA in steals for a couple seasons. He's a four-time 50-40-90 club, which means he shot 50% from the field, 40% from three, and 90% for a free throw line, he did that four times. And he did a couple of them in a row. In 2008 and 2010, he did it in a row for two, three years straight. For two years straight. Yeah, three years straight, he did it in a row. So he's very efficient. Basically, what he's saying, he's efficient from the passing, efficient from the scoring. He's an efficient player. He played most of his career with the Phoenix Suns. Uh, so we better go over what he does. Chris, I mean, Steve Nash is basically a passer. He can shoot the ball very, very well. He's a person that picks his spots on how he scores. He just doesn't score for the fuck of it. He just knows when to shoot. If he comes off a screen, he's pulling up that jumper. But he's not going to pull up because it's open. He's going to pull up if he don't have no teammates around. If he don't have no teammates coming to the basket. He, he He's showing floor vision, court vision. He knows when he know where his guys are at. He's always looking at angles. He's always looking at the player movement. He's just not scoring for the fuck of it. He's scoring because he's open. He's scoring because it's a smart shot. You don't shoot 50% from the field if you're throwing a bullshit. And you don't shoot 50% from the field if you didn't have a jump shot. He shot 50% on majority of his jump shot on his two-point shot. He had a career-high 58% on two-pointers. So he was picking his shots very, very well to shoot 50% from the field. That's crazy. He shoot 49% for a career from the field. That's dominant. He had a lot of seasons, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seasons. And he had five, six in a row, which shot 50%, which is ridiculous for a point guard to be shooting 50%. But like I said, it's because his, he, he was patient. He picked his shots. He had the court vision to know when to pass and when to shoot. He was a floor general. He was a ball hand, do, dominant ball handler. He had a career high of 11 assists three time, four times. He That's very amazing to have 11 assists in the whole season for a whole 82 games. And he had 11 assists four times, which is ridiculous. He had 10 assists. No, actually, he had 11 assists five times. And then he had a couple with 10 assists. So he was one of the best players and playmakers in the league. But the most important thing about Steve Nash is that he just knew when to pick his spots and when to score. He was patient. He knew when to shoot, when not to shoot, when to pass. And that's what made his legacy so great, to shoot 50% and also get 11 assists and also give you double digits, high double digit numbers, 15, 16, 18 points. That's what made him win these MVPs. Is because he just picked his spots. He knew when to pass. He knew when to score. He was efficient on the free throw line for efficient from the three point line. 
he shoots 42% from the three-point line for a career. The only, He wasn't the best rebounder, but he had a career high of four rebounds. He averaged three for a career, which is a, which is pretty good. You want to average about four for a point guard, but three is pretty good for his size and his athleticism. Uh, he left the mark on it. He made, he left his imprint and his mark on the NBA with his decision making, his shot selection, and his efficiency. He's one of the top ten point guards of all time, easily. Like I said, he won the MVP when you had a lot of Hall of Famers in the same league in their primes, and he took away MVPs. He made, went made deep playoff runs. He had legendary battles in the playoffs against the, these other Hall of Fame teams. And Steve Nash left his mark as one of the top 10 point guards of all time. Efficient passer, uh, just a super efficient guy. He's ridiculous. 50%, 50, 40, 90 club in averaging 10 assists a game is ridiculous efficiency and crazy numbers for a point guard that ain't that athletic and not the quickest guy, but one of the smartest guys in the NBA history. So give your hats off to Steve Nash. I'm going to end the video Comment, like, subscribe, and share. I'll respond to every comment. Feel free to leave suggestions. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. And hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel and you like the video. Queen Wakey.